and this is Mayor Tommy Battle. A program this week will highlight Ditto Landing. Here to tell us about Ditto's future is the marina's new executive director, Brandy Quick. A brand new concert venue and event space is headed your way. The National Weather Service reported at least 15 feet of flood water. And this is a, a unique space that is going to be on the river. Brandy Quick, thanks for coming, Pickle Tato. First thing I wanted to show you, um, for this season, we got we had uh, this is our second season that we're going. So on the second season, we're giving all of our guests t-shirts. Oh, cool! But I only got two. Uh, that's not okay. two t-shirts, but two colors. Um, so I'm giving you the choice: either gray or green. I like green. There you go. All right, that's everybody's thanks. choice. <laughs> Everybody likes green. Everybody likes green. There you so go. We're Thank have to you. Appreciate adjust that. Just order next time. Um, we're going to get in a little bit later of how we know each other, but I just want to first start off talk about a little bit of your background, kind of. Uh, I know you grew up in Hazel Green, right? That's right. Yeah, so how was your childhood? I mean, growing up, family size, any any good stories from, from your childhood that kind of made the person you are now? So I grew up in Hazel Green. Okay. Um, all my life, went to Hazel Green from kindergarten all the way through my senior year. Um, have a, a younger brother, full brother, half brother that's an older brother. So I'm kind of a middle child, yeah. but I'm my older sister and all that. So my family is kind of, I have... My parents divorced when I was seven. Okay. So I uh, lived with my mom. Yeah. And um, yeah, so again, stayed uh, stayed around here sure. my whole life. So, I mean, I, I came from divorced parents mm -hmm. also. I mean, do you think that that changed your personality or anything or did it make it harder or was it any different or? I don't remember my parents being married. Okay. So, yeah. um, because I was seven. Sure. But it definitely made me more committed to my marriage. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I yeah. decided, you know, when I get married, I'm married. Yeah. And it's a serious thing for me. It's not one of those optional things. Yeah. Understand. Yep. So probably going, you know, going through school and everything. I mean, I mean, I, we'll get to your your work stuff a little bit later. But um, I know your work ethic and. <laughs> And the stuff that you've done in your career, so that had to come from somewhere. Was that instilled by your parents or just dedication to school? I mean, what what do you think that made that drive for you? School was my thing. Yeah. I was voted most studious in my senior class. Okay. So I was a big nerd. Yeah, that's what my son tells me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he reminds yeah, they, me of that a lot. <laughs> yeah, they, they tell you straight up, don't they? <laughs> yeah, you yeah. don't have to wonder. So, yeah. um, so yeah, so I, you know, was that straight A student and. Again, I wasn't the partier or anything like that, mm -hmm. but um, it was it was a thing for me. I was I decided what I wanted to do, and I wanted to go to college. And I wanted to do those things, and I was very driven. Mm -hmm. I, as soon as I decided it, that's what I was going to do. I met my husband when I was eighth or ninth grade. Oh wow! Okay. And so we dated all through high school. High school sweethearts, my college sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> we're, yeah, so, we're those people. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so did, did he go to University of Alabama too? He went to Hazel Green, and then um, he decided college wasn't his thing. Yep, so I get it. Yep. So, but again, we've we've known each other our whole lives. Lived down the road from each other in, okay. when we were in school. So yeah. So come. On, I know you got um, liberal arts, mm -hmm. and then a master's in business. Yeah. Uh, no, a master's in public public, uh, public affairs. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So. So that's a liberal arts degree also, okay. but um, I was encouraged to do that. Um, my my bachelor's degree is management information systems, which is a business degree. Okay. And then my master's is public affairs, which is liberal arts. Um, I did my liberal arts degree because um, my boss at the time, who was the director at the BBC, who I, you know, I worked there for 19 years at the Von Braun Center, um, he encouraged me to do that. Um, it was something that he was interested in, Ron Evans and... Um, and he felt like that was a good direction for me to go. And I appreciate it. He's he one of my mentors all the way through my career at the BBC. And um, so I did that. And um, it was a labor of love for me because it was a hard thing to do when you're working um, full time and, and going back to school also and okay, I doing thought, all that. Yeah. I thought, didn't you work at a bank before BBC? Yeah. But that, I was a kid. Okay. I worked there from the time I was 16 to when I graduated uh, okay. from school. So, um, or, okay. So I was 16 to what 22, um, so I there for six years. So, yeah. so the the people don't know about the, what the VBC is, the Von Braun Center here mm -hmm. here in Huntsville. You started working. You were working there when you were still going to college. Mm -mm. As soon as I was a fresh out. Okay. So I graduated um, May and started working there in November. 
and I was an admin assistant there, and um, they called me a facility coordinator. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took all, several departments, engineering, production, operations, and kind of connected all those, created the communication between them. Sorry about that. And created the communication between those departments. And after that, then I went on to um, manage the box office. After that, I became uh, the guest services coordinator and um, event services coordinator. So I took over all that and event services director mm -hmm. and then assistant director. So I was responsible for all of the day-to-day -day operations throughout the whole the whole complex. So when you, when you, I know, we're going to come back to, because I got some questions about the VBC. Okay. You know, yeah. and, and you're tenured there, but I know your last position there was assistant director, yep. right? Yeah. So... People that don't know what the Von Braun Center here is in Huntsville, it's basically, I mean, you'd probably be better to give a description of what goes on there than I do, right? So, so it's the convention center, mm -hmm. the arena, it's the center of all entertainment, essentially, and all, all the meeting space um, for the whole city. Yeah. So um, conventions, banquet space, um, theater, um, arena, uh, hockey, all the sports, um, basically, in the city that are professional type sports are have started there. Yeah. So that's yeah. a that's a that's a pretty big uh position, I think. Yeah. It, it was <laughs> a busy place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got any stories that you can tell uh, some or maybe that you don't want to tell, maybe we can get it when you're done with it. <laughs> um <laughs> I'm sure well, there's some good ones. I mean, there, I mean, something that busy, there's got to be some kind of drama going on, you know. Oh at yeah. Some it, point. Was, it was always um there was never a dull moment, but the cool thing I I really liked about it was um the coordination between all the people there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have all the the deep, dark secrets of everything because there was so much going on. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed all the people. So, you could just call them. It was almost like a family. Yeah. So, I could always call on just any department and help resolve problems. The, the thing that um, I think that I miss and the VBC probably misses the most is I took every complaint that was one of my major jobs. Every single complaint that came into the Von Braun Center was given to Brandy. So, See, that was a preparation for me. That's what that was. That's what. They said, okay, when <laughs> okay. you meet Bill Neal, you'll be ready. <laughs> right. We'll get to that later. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But, yeah so. I, I, you know, that's something that I mean, you've never really talked about was the VBC. And I guess I've always had that question exactly. You know, I couldn't imagine. I mean, that's, you got to have a lot of uh, coordination skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of patience, I would think, to listen to a bunch of people complain. And, I yeah, mean, and that I, was just part of my job. Yeah. So um, I had all the events coming together. Um, so all the event coordinators worked for me. Um, just any department kind of had to, at some point, mesh with what I was doing. Mm. So, um, again, but it was great. I enjoyed it a lot. It prepped me for my job now. Yeah. So, And I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit. But yep. um, it it was awesome. So, at what point did um, I, I, you met your husband when you were in ninth grade? Mm -hmm. Ish, yeah. Ish, yeah. And you got married while you were at VBC. Yeah, I know. Before that, so. oh, before that, yeah. Okay, so while you were in college, so, though. Yeah, as soon okay. as I, as soon as I got out of college, I got married. Gotcha. And okay. then, so in between, you know, working at the bank and then going to the VBC, I, we got and married. I know, mm -hmm. And I know you have kids. A kid. A kid. Okay. I have one. Mm -hmm. So having a kid, being married <laughs> mm -hmm. with all that responsibility. So I would think that you had to have a very good, stable home life in order, yep. or, or somebody that's supportive. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. My husband Scott, um, he's awesome, yeah. and he's supported me through all through these job changes, but and just really everything that I've done, whether it was in college, high school, or uh, high school, college, and then job changes. Mm. Now, really, I haven't had that many job changes if you think about it. Right. Uh, North Alabama Bank, and then going to the VBC, but now at the VBC, several career job sure. changes but yep. not locations so but you know at the vbc it was not times weekends you know you had yeah. to be there when it happened yeah. so um yeah but he's he's incredible and um, we might mention it i don't know but um some health issues along the way that he's just been awesome yep um so 19 years of vbc dealing with mm -hmm. all that yeah so your next position was um director I'm not sure the exec executive director of Ditto. Executive director. Executive director. Let's keep that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you earned it, you got to keep it. That's um, right. Executive director of Ditto Landing. Right. So what brought what brought that? Is that a job that you heard of, or was you approached with it, or how how did that come about? Uh, even finding out about it. 
it was really random, actually. Um, the mayor, Mayor Battle, puts out, you know, just emails every now and then. I'm on, his, on an email list that anybody can get on. Mm. And he um, put out a job posting. And I just kind of happened to click on it, reading through it. It was like four pages of just stuff, you know, this this job listing. And I'm reading through it. And I was like, oh, I can, I've can i done that or I can do that. And I just kind of kept reading on it. And then, honestly, I hadn't been down to Ditto that much. Mm. So, didn't know a lot about it. So, I came down. My husband and I drove down one day at lunch. I said, let's go down there and take a look. And I was like, this is great. Why don't be, Why didn't I know more about this? Yeah. And then I kind of asked the people about it just a little randomly. And other people were like, mm, I don't know about it. I don't, I don't know that much about it. And I'm thinking, this is a problem. Yeah. You know, why don't people know more about it? So then I asked a, f- a few other city leaders and just kind of just asked the question, like, what do you think? And got a lot of encouragement. So I thought, well, I'll apply because I was looking for something in my life and in my career that I could kind of make a difference. I don't want it to sound real hokey or anything, but no, I wanted it's to. Not hokey at all, man. I wanted to um, just grow my career and and give give something back. Mm. So I thought, well, I'll you know I'll apply. You know, worst that can happen is I can keep my same job that I love, sure, and or I can get this new job that I'm sure I love. And so went through a few interviews with the with the board, and and they seemed to like me, and I thought it was a great fit, and so here I am. So did you were on Tommy Battle's uh, email list? Did you ever have an opportunity to, to speak with him about this? Or um, I talked to Jenny Robinson, okay. who is the um, city councilwoman for the, for this area, and I I knew her. We had worked together on a lot of projects. Um, we were in leadership um, on leadership board, which is leadership Greater Huntsville. And we were on that board together, and we had a lot of conversations um, about different things. And I just kind of pulled her aside and asked her what she thought. And she she said, you know, she thought I'd be a good fit. Yeah. And um, I trust her opinion a lot. And so just went ahead and went after it. Well, it's a big, <clears throat> definitely a big project. Um, <laughs> yeah. Coming from the VBC, you probably thought, well, you know, I'm going to take this and, you know, and do whatever. And then you get there, and you... <laughs> and you <laughs> And you happen to meet people like me. Um, so what's a, I'm sure there's been challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've had discussions on on different people's podcasts, and we've talked a little bit about uh, me being, you know, being down in Ditto. And I just, I'm going to say right now that I really appreciate, I wouldn't say lead way. I will say patience with, with me. <laughs> um so I'll, I'll tell you a little bit why I'm grateful. Um, I ha- I was having a hard time. You know, I, I just retired. I've been retired for three or four years or whatever it was. And so I was still trying to fit back in, into society. So I was having some some issues. And to be honest with you, uh, the Tennessee River, you know, I say this quite a bit, but kind of saved my life. <clears throat> and if I didn't have that opportunity down there to kind of let loose a little bit, mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it really, really, really helped my mental status. <laughs> um, just just being out there and just getting away from, you know, the house and just being with friends and stuff like that. Um, I know that you've, you know, I probably frustrated you a little bit every now and then, but I do appreciate, you know, the patience that you have with me and everybody that was there on, on our dock to, <laughs> to this day still. But I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, well, and, and that's what one thing that I wanted to say. So... And I don't think people realize it, but especially our boaters, it's almost like we have some neighborhoods, right? Yes. Um, and each neighborhood's a little bit different. It is. Yep. So, and each dock kind of coordinates within themselves, and they all have their own little organization, and they <laughs> right. have all have their own little r- relationships. Yep. And, you know, there's the little mayor of, of every dock, yep. and, and you kind of learn how that works. And But each dock supports what we do in a sure. different way. Absolutely. And um so they're they're always helping. Yep. Um just like, you know, when we have some kind of event happen that's a not just an event like a fun event, not not a VBC event event, right. but just a problem, for mm-hmm. example. You'll you'll go down there and we always have some boaters that are coming over and just, hey, can we help you? Is there is there something we can do to help? Yep. Or or they may call us and tell us that it happened. And so it's just great to know that we have that kind of support that I had no idea. Mm-hmm. You know, I had no idea when I came to work at Ditto that we would have those kind of relationships that happen. 
And um, we, I work hard to be able to provide more amenities or and to have conversations and, and develop those relationships too. And it, there were some growing pains mm-hmm. when I first started coming down there because, you know, there's just adjustments and we got to get along and get to know each other and all that. But I think everybody's starting to realize that what we're doing and what I'm doing and what our board's doing is trying to make it better. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of new things coming in. So no. I, I don't want to talk for too much work, but it, it makes a big difference. And when you came down, we got to know each other a lot. Yep. We had some conversations. <laughs> One or two. Yep. <laughs> or three or four. <laughs> but, but you know, we, we got to know each other. Yep. And you knew me. You knew what how I worked. And I knew how you worked. And then when you saw Gizmo, I, I told you. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you'll miss, you miss Gizmo. <laughs> yeah, my, and I, I do to this day. I know. As a matter of fact, I've had a couple different chances to get it back, but um, there were just some differences, right? Um, yeah. So it happens. But I tell you, every I mean, I've looked at different boats, and I've I just I, I compare everything to that thing, and, right. and that's the bad thing because I'm sure there's some other ones I w- would be happy with for a little bit, but right. I, I would always compare it to that, and I'm just I don't have that feel that I did with that thing. Yep. And maybe I should have just bit the bullet and just went ahead and got it back. Right. Even though I knew, you know, I might have been paying a little bit more than I should have. But um yeah, I do I do miss that boat. And I was I was there maybe about a year or two, maybe even three before you got there. And you're you're exactly right describing the atmosphere down there. I mean it's its own little towns and yeah you do have your own little mares, but it's almost like a little community in, in itself also um, right everybody knows everybody and then so when you have somebody new coming in it's like oh they, they bought our <laughs> they bought, you know they bought our housing project you know what are they going to be like what are they going to do and so there's always like this little well they're not going to come here and you know and, right. and, and tell us what to do some growing pains so, some growing pains yeah. so but you're right you know eventually once you get to know each other and realize everybody's there for the same purposes which you know to go down there and relax and have a good time, and hopefully in the in the mix, not bother too too many too many other people. Right. right. <laughs> so, um, but I do, you know, I have noticed a lot of changes down there, which is good, and I know there's a lot of more upcoming changes. Mm-hmm. And I guess we should have started with this. Ditto Landing is uh, the marina, obviously, um, on southern uh, southern Huntsville. It's right on, on the Tennessee River. Huh? And I remember being there. We felt, and I don't know if you felt this. I didn't feel like the city supported it down there as much as I thought that they should. Correct. What, which, you know, it, it, it was hard because you wanted to keep what you had down there. Right. And, and knowing if you made it better and grew it, you'd have more people down there, which might take away what you had down there. So right. it, it, was, it was a hard thing to, excuse me, for us to complain about, hey, Where's the restaurant? Where's this? Where's that? But then on the other hand, be like, well, you know, if we had all that, then there'd be a lot more. <laughs> right. <laughs> so right. it's like a it's like a secret, you know, that you didn't want want uh, anybody else to know. But I think the secret's out now. Yes. <laughs> because um, I believe so. <laughs> because you know what we're complaining about the well. First off, I wanted to ask this too: Who actually owns Ditto? Because I know on the project that we're getting ready to talk about, it says Huntsville, Madison, Can- Madison County, and the Port Authority. Who's, whose property is that? Who owns so, Ditto? So deeds, everything that exists is deeded to the Huntsville, Madison County, Marina, and Port Authority, which you're exactly right. So that board is appointed by the city and the county. How, do you, how, can, how can two different entities appoint people? So it's it's a coordinated effort. So the city appoints two and a half board members and okay. the county appoints two and a half board members. Gotcha. So that half is an alternating appointment. Uh, okay. So we have five board members. So just like the airport, just like the hospital, we're an authority. So our board runs everything we do. Okay. Um, the difference between um, Ditto or the Huntsville, Madison County Marina and Port Authority you know, if I can say right. that every time. Right. And the Von Braun Center Board is, we are an authority, whereas the Von Braun Center Board is not. That means we can borrow money and the Von Braun Center Board cannot. Okay. The Von Braun Center, if they need funding, they have to borrow through, they have to borrow through the city. 
we don't have to borrow. We don't have to borrow on our own. We can do that. Or we can also work through the city in a bond issue. Okay. There's two different ways to do that. Or the county, for that matter. So, we have all those options. Okay. And so, funding for, say, um, the state docks project. So, the new road that comes in, the parking that's been built, Mm -hmm. that was funded by the city. Okay. The new project itself. Can you believe that? (laughs) All right. Sorry about that. No Um, worries. So, we were talking about the the Port Authority and, and how that worked. Okay. So, the project that we have going now, which is the state docks project. So the road that was built and the parking that's built, the county paid for that. Or I'm sorry, the city paid for that. The new building and all that that's being done. So the state docks being renovated and the new shells that'll be out in front. Mm-hmm. All of that is being paid by paid for by the county. And then following that, the city is going to add some more parking and they're going to work to create a place for the for boats to be able to boat up to this new exciting venue. Right. So we have the support of the city and the county, whereas in the past, I don't think that the city and the county have been very engaged with Ditto Landing and what Ditto did. So, what made, makes you think they changed their mind? Was that you going in there and pounding or the board coming in and saying, hey? I think know? it's been a combination of a lot of things. Yeah. I, think, um, I think that Huntsville's growing, and I think that as Huntsville grows, um, Huntsville moves further to the closer to the river, sure. and as Huntsville becomes closer to the river, even though the city limits have always been there, mm-hmm. but as Huntsville's active area, as South Huntsville becomes more active, as um, as we become more vocal in talking with the city and the county, we become more engaged. I talk to the city and the county at least once a week, if not more often. As those things happen, they realize we're here. Yeah. And we're serious, and they see what they see that we can back it up with. Hey, if you give us funding, we're going to do the right thing. Yeah. And as that happens, and our board is on on board with talking to whoever needs to be talked to, we're applying for grants, and we're getting money from you know from other places. So, you know, we're investing too. So when Huntsville Madison County mm-hmm. gives gives you that money, are they considering that a loan, or is that just like a no? Here you go. Type no. thing. Okay. And they're not technically giving us the money. They're paying for the project. Mm. And then they're giving us the the end result of the project. Okay. Which so is fine. Th- so there's no there's no payback. For, okay. No. So really cool event. And I think the they were from what I remember that they were start, supposed to start breaking ground around June or so. Yeah. And that's something probably, like that. Maybe a little not later. Gonna happen. Yeah, probably so a little later. I was down there talking to Nick and he said something about um Going to be phases to everything. Like the mm-hmm. first phase is going to be where the actually state dock is now, mm-hmm. kind of revamp, uh, revamping that. Right. Second phase is a portion behind it, in front of it. The yeah, towards the water. Yes. Okay. Yep. And then like the third phase is the actual docks. marina dock. Yeah, the docks yeah. that would be out in front. Mm-hmm. So, what's the? I mean, is there a dead? you know, hey, we have to be done by this date kind of thing? Or is it just what's what's been some of the challenges to keep that on schedule? Or is there a schedule that you want to keep? So challenges are just getting it done. Yeah. Um, we have the funding. It's been earmarked. It's there. Um, but then, you know, you have an ice storm mm. and people can't work for a couple of weeks. You have yeah. different different things going on. You, we've got to, we want to make sure that when we go out for bid, we come back in for bid at the right spot. Yeah. So, you know, just things like that. You know, we're going to have weather issues. We're going to have all the things, but we're just going to power through them. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but everybody's pushing it. We want it to happen just as bad as everybody else does. So, we're there. Yeah. It's going to be... So, I'm still on... Um, I'm still on the list, right? <laughs> I've been on the list for about a year and a half, two years. On now. the waiting list, yeah, for, yeah, a slip. You got it. Yeah, uh, I don't. No, I don't have one now. Yeah, see, but um, I think we've called you about one. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you know. Well, I got into other, have a boat. I, I got into other things this in the past four or five months that mm-hmm. I need to take care of. Right, gotcha. But um, it was going to be this year for sure, but then this other stuff kind of popped up, and so. You mean uh, life happens? Life happens. Well, it's I bought some stuff that I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so I need to I need to shed some responsibilities before I, I get back into it. And and I just refuse to buy boats in the springtime or summer when everything's 
Everybody wants one. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, you know how I am. I don't buy anything unless I get a good deal on it. Right. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> you're not going to find a good deal in the spring or summertime For sure. with, with a boat. So, um, all right. So, some some uh, other challenges. I want to. <laughs> this one's going to be pretty specific because I think it, I think it's, I think it's funny. Okay. So what what happens if do you have any troubles down there with um say uh hmm. careful yeah <laughs> <laughs> no I'll just leave that out never mind <laughs> let me let me switch let me switch gears no I'm going to bring it up oh, go ahead. I think it's funny I appreciate you handling a situation that you handled with me <laughs> um. I had a family member that had come back. Oh, no. <laughs> that had come back from, he was, uh, you know, he was out doing stuff, and he'd come back in town. And, you know, at that point, we were always down at Ditto. Sure. My family yeah. was always down there all the time, and he loved the place, you know, down there just as much as I do. Um, but, you know, being back from where he was at, you know, hadn't seen his friends for a long time. Yep. Very excited. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. You know, having a good time. As people do, you know, they have a good time, you know. Sometimes things happen or whatever. So this family member's friend had posted something on Facebook about some of the antics that was going on. Yeah. And so And tagged us. Let's <laughs> just put it there. And tagged it away. <laughs> and so I get to, I get this call from you, Bill. Uh blah 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 blah. You know, is this you know, I'm like, Yep, I got it. I'm gonna take care of it. She's like, All right, yeah, just you know, I don't wanna make a big deal about it, but you know, when it's on Facebook and you tag us, you know, I got you know. Mm-hmm. If you can take care of it, I'm like, yeah, okay. So I call my family member. Yeah. Hey, man, <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> what? I she told on me, and you know, he was pretty. <laughs> he, he was, you know, I think he understands now. Now that he's older, you know, that could have been handled a whole different way. Yeah. That he probably wouldn't have liked. So that's the best possible. That's scenario, the best problem, right? That's the best possible scenario. I really appreciate giving me the opportunity to take care of it because I know it could have went. On. I could have went bad. Well, and and that's the thing. I mean, that you got to be reasonable. Sure. And I mean, getting to a different level when you don't have to get to a different no. level, it's it doesn't help anybody. You know, I I had a mentor when I when I was working at the BBC, he was an event management mentor, and he always said, "What good can come of this?" Mm. That was kind of his litmus test for everything he did. What good can come of this? And I I I learned a lot from that. Like, what good can come from me creating a whole bunch of problems. That's what could happen. Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> the <laughs> sign's going <laughs> As if by cue. <laughs> yep. But, um, we planned that, by so, Yeah, sound effect. Yep. So, um, so, you know, that's kind of the approach I try to take with a lot of things. What good can come of it? And if if I can come up with a way that better things can come of it, I try to. Yeah. Well, uh, some of the other projects, too. I mean, we talked mainly <clears throat> about the state docks and everything, but I know there was a plan to put a couple more lakes or ponds or whatever you want to call it down there and grow the marina and i know you had the mm. rv lot that you completed well not completed but we got one phase of it in and it's pretty full mm. um it's as full as we can make it and still and still um take care of our recreational campers too um but we want to expand that and keep going now we won't do the next phase like we did the last phase mm-hmm. we'll um do some have some more financing into it and we'll just do it lock and key. We'll say, Hey, we need this. And at the end of it, it'll have big trees and it'll have everything yeah. all done. Um, we did that one kind of in, in separate blocks and it was just, it was difficult. Yeah. Um, Every time I drive by there, it seems pretty full. So it is. I would think that it's kind of paying for itself. It is. Yeah. So it is, but um, just you know, have it, multiple it's projects. actually, it's actually paying for other things Gotcha. Okay. right now. So um, yeah, but we want to, have more of that. A lot of those um, are extended stay campers, um, especially this time of year. So um, we try to, that helps our, our budget, helps our bottom line. But um, but we try to be careful because we want to have, those are, we're careful who those people are because they've gone through a very rigorous approval process. Mm-hmm. So we have to make sure that they have a time that, that they're there, a reason why they're there, how long they want to stay, there's an ending time for why they're staying, you know, all those things. Mm. And then when they, um, then they're there, then we still leave enough for a ratio to be able to take care of our recreational campers. Gotcha. Yeah. So you said there's going to be another phase. Is that just oh, going to yeah. grow out to? 
to that field out to the there. East? Yep. To the okay. Yeah, east. <laughs> east. East east. <laughs> <laughs> now there was so, uh, talk about zip lines and stuff down there too. Is that they kinda kinda get kinked? Yeah. I don't, they have some zip lines already over at um the vision ministry over in that their space. Mm. I just really don't think that's kind of the direction we need to go. Yeah. And then you mentioned expand, expanding the marina. Mm. So there's a couple of things we are going to do, and then there's a couple of things that are on our master plan that just can't happen. Remembering that that master plan was put in place like a couple of years before I started there, like 2014, 15, something like that. Okay. And it was, it was basically just taking everyone's ideas and let's put them all on paper. Let's not take into account like what can really, really happen. Um, try to, but let's not go too deep into that. So, um, for example, expanding the marina. Well, that's that's a good idea, except for um, like where they're expanding the marina, like the bedrock right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, like really would get to blow stuff up. Like you could come down That'd and awesome. we could blow stuff up, which would be fun. What are we waiting on? Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> the Arsenal might not appreciate it. No, but, they're used to it. Well, I mean, we they got, would want to blow stuff up. <laughs> we got to listen to their shit, so why can't we do our own? You know? <laughs> they would want to blow stuff up. <laughs> so um, so that kind of stuff is probably not going to happen. Um, so if you can't do that, then maybe we need to find a place to be able to put some smaller boats and relocate them and kind of just adjust how we're putting boats and where we're putting boats. Mm. So we've got East Harbor, which is upriver. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'd like to put in some slips there where we can put some of the smaller boats. So instead of having to put up maybe a 16, 18 foot pontoon in a 32 foot slip right. or even a 20, 24 foot in a 32 foot slip, maybe we can put it up there, which frees up a 32 foot slip, which makes it easier for us to put a um, boat that's better better suited for that space. Yeah. That so. is a, <clears throat> well, right now it's, I think, underutilized area over there. It is. Um, and there was some controversy of how that all happened. And I, and I really don't know the whole story of it. So the area that we're talking about used to be, I think it was privately owned, wasn't it? No. It was not. Okay. It was owned by the county. Okay. Um, and the county leased it to, um, the Whitesburg Boat and Yacht Club. Gotcha. So they leased it to them, um, but all of those boathouses were individually permitted through TVA. Mm. Like every single one of them had their own individual permit. TVA was changing their model. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to bring all of everything under one permit. Gotcha. And they did not want to permit bo- boat houses in that part of the river that had walls. Yeah. Okay. So floating boat houses that had walls, they they did not want to continue to permit. So the county decided that instead of leasing that property, which they didn't have an executed lease to the Whitesburg Boat and Yacht Club, they wanted us to run it because we're, I mean, it makes sense. We run a marina, right that's a marina. Yep. We're connected, that makes sense. Sure. So they deeded that to us and they asked us to you know, clean it up, take care of it, you know, do all the things. So we did. It was it was a process, and now we are ready to put in a new launch ramp. We've we've got the money to do that. We got a grant to be able to do that. So we're going to fix the launch ramp, put that in. We've redone the um, clubhouse. We've got kayak bass fishing down there. They're going to um, help us with kind of reactivating that. We've put in some more security measures down there. We've fixed the entryway, which was kind of an awkward mess to get into. Yeah. So we're doing a lot of work down there. So is that storage area, that's part of Weisberg too? Are you mm-hmm. guys going to be, I guess, we control? That. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's us. Yep. Yep. Okay, I do. I remember that. I had, yeah. my, I had a... You had a boat down there I for did. a while. No, was it No, was it a boat or did you have... I had a boat. Yeah. Okay. Well, it wasn't my boat. It was... Well, anyway. yeah, it was my boat. <laughs> I was Your on, boat. It was on my boat. <laughs> yeah, that boat that I had down there was actually my brother-in-law's. And... um. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, he's he's down from, he lives down in Dothan mm-hmm. area. And um, here's here's where I messed up. I like telling my stuff a lot. Um, it was up here for the, you know, the summer. And he's like, hey, just keep it up there because I never run it. You know, you, you'll use it way more than I do. I'm like, mm-hmm. all right. So we found that spot and had it there. Well, you know, fall was coming. And so I talked to him on the phone. I was like, hey, man, uh, 
are you going to come up here anytime soon? To, you know, are you going to winterize this? You want me to winterize it? You want me to bring it to somebody? Winter? He's like, no, I've never winterized that boat. That's because he's like, in yeah. South Alabama. <laughs> you know, it's only, I mean, it's what, three and a half hours away? Mm -hmm. But, you know, usually there's about a 10 degree difference yeah. at any given point. You know, of course, you know, it varies. But if it's 60 here, it's 70 down there, right. generally. So I was like, well, you know, I said, it gets colder up here. He's like, nah, you know, that thing should just self-drain out. You know, he said, I've never, I've never winterized that. I'm like, are you sure? He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right. So I never, I never even thought about it again. I mean, I should have, I should have been like, no, man, listen. And just went and did it, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I blame myself a lot for it. But, you know, I go, I <laughs> get it in the springtime. Oh, no. Backed it up. There, it ditto. Fired right off. Popped right off. And uh, and it's running, and uh, I start backing off the trailer, and uh, I it just sounded different, you know. I didn't know exactly what it was, but so I, you know, I didn't even get it all the way off the trailer. I mean, as I was backing off, I was like, Man, so I put it back up, you know, on the trailer, you know, with the butt still in the water, and I left the engine cover up. Well, here's just water just coming in. I'm like, oh no, I forgot the drain plug, you know. That's what I thought. Oh. So I turned it off and pulled it out. And I look, I'm like, yeah, I put the drain plug in. I'm like, what in the world? So I, you know, pull the drain plug, let all the water come out. I'm like, where's this water coming from? Plug it back up, back to back in. I'm looking for leaks, nothing. Crank it up. As soon as I crank it up, this water is just coming out the manifold. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just pouring out. I'm like, lesson learned. I'm like, what is going on here? I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I cracked the block, cracked the manifold. Those 10 I, degrees will get you. I cracked everything. Anyway. To say the least, it was a complete loss, you know. Wow. So, um, so before I even called him, I got estimates, you know, of a new engine, you know, all, all this stuff. And I think it was around, I think Erwin quoted me like eight, nine thousand dollars or something like that. I'm like, I know it ain't that much. I mean, I can get a, I can get a pretty good block, brand new block for thirty five hundred bucks, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, putting one in ain't that big a deal. So I, you know, called around, got some estimates. So I figured it was going to be about six grand. So I, before I called him, I, you know, I said, "Hey, man, you know, I put this boat," and I said, "You know, told him everything was wrong." He said, "Well, that sucks." I'm like, "Yeah, you know." I said, "But, you know," I said, "Me and Carrie talked about it. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna pay for it. You know, to get fixed." He's like, yeah, "There's no, no, you're not. No, you're not." I'm like, "Yes, I am." I was like, "He's like, no, man, I told you." I'm like, "Well, then I told you too, and I knew better." So <laughs> we went back and forth, but he he just wouldn't. He wouldn't, he wouldn't allow it. He wouldn't let oh, us. Oh, wow. Stay. Well, to this day, that was, man, that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. That boat is still sitting in his his pole barn. <laughs> <laughs> he's had all kinds of different ideas. You know, he's going to make it electric. He's going to put, you know, jet ski motor. You know, he's had all these plans of what he's going to do. But, and I even offered to buy it from him, but he just won't sell it. So, hmm. but yeah, that's the a, that's a story of that boat down there in that, in that marina. So there, so there is no... Plans of an, of more lakes or ponds or what I was reading. Well, there's a you know we have those retention type ponds. Yeah, but I thought yeah. that they were going to open that up or, and 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 put okay. Mm -hmm. So that's no, not going to happen. Not going to happen. No. So next question I ask, I have to ask it because you know all my buddies down there they're going to be like yeah, 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 you know. <laughs> so I'm going to ask it: Is there any um, plans on upgrading the docks down there? Well, I mean we've done a lot of work to them already. You have done a lot of work to them. Yeah. Um, the one I was on didn't have much done to it though. F dot. Yeah, it's fixing to. Yeah, those are the ones I'm <laughs> I'm complaining for. <laughs> I, I got you. Well, you know, after today, yeah, <laughs> it's gonna have some work done to really? it. Really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> gotcha. Well, can we? Are we allowed to say what happened? Uh, well, yeah. I okay. Mean, yeah. So we had some pretty high winds, mm -hmm. and the way those mariners are. Are laid out down uh, down there. There's they're floating docks, but they're tied off by big cables. Right. And um, basically, when high winds come, all that weight is pulling on those big cables. Mm -hmm. And cable probably what snapped last night. Yeah, I don't know. We're still looking at it, trying to figure out exactly what happened. But yeah, I mean, we were under what fifty mile, fifty sixty mile gust winds. This it was actually this morning because. Mm. I think um, Tim was down there six thirty this morning. Everything was fine. So, yeah. yep. So we're just we're waiting until we get it back into place when the wind advisory lifts tomorrow. Yeah. And see, we're just trying to hold on right now. So, so the the other some of the other docks that are uncovered, like the smaller, mm -hmm. the, all that stuff's going to remain the same. Yep. Okay. Yep. 
that's kind of our waiting spot. Gotcha. So if people want to get either, I mean, it's a less expensive dock, but if they also want to get on, get a wet slip, but they don't, we either don't have space or whatever, they can kind of stay there until we get a covered slip for them. What's kind of, what's a uh, usual waiting list? I know it's dependent on the size of boat and everything, but yeah. um, generally. So, so 40 foot's not long at all. Okay. A 32 foot, 50 foot will be the longest Long Longest waiting. waiting. Yeah, because we don't have as many and, and, you know, you can't take them anywhere. Yeah. So 32, it's not bad. Maybe three or four months usually. Yeah. So it depends so, on when people leave though. Right. Yeah. Some people quicker than others. Yep. I know there's one guy down there that's been waiting to leave. <laughs> well, not, no, not, not, not bad, but he's, I guess he's selling his boat. Probably not. Tim's neighbor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. He'll probably be out there since he gets his boat sold. Anyway, so um, with all your career, I, and I'm sure, obviously, it's a full-time job and a huge headache. I know there's probably things that you do on your off time to try to let loose like we do. Like, we come down there to, to let loose, but we cause yeah. headache for you. Where do you go to get away from your headache? I know you uh, got, in, got into racing quite a bit. Yeah, my son is, uh, he's 16, Cooper is, and He's been racing um, since he was seven. Mm -hmm. um, he races go-karts competitively. We just got back from Talladega. Um, now, that's the go-kart track, not yeah. the NASCAR track. Sure. But, um, yeah, so we just got back from there this weekend. Um, so we go as far as Ohio, Daytona Beach, um, and anywhere in between. Mm -hmm. And he races those. Wants to get into car racing soon. So. And that's been a family thing since... Shoot for a long time, right? Yeah. I mean, as long as I've known you, yeah, probably before that. Yeah, he's it's he's been doing it for about nine, ten years now, yeah. and um, and it, it is truly a family thing. Yeah. So, I mean, I go, I get greasy and dirty, and mm. um, get excited and all that, yeah. just like everybody else does. You're fighting and, in the stands with the I, other moms. I, I don't get that excited. <laughs> <laughs> I try to behave myself, but yeah. um, and then of course my husband goes. Cooper's um, my husband's dad goes with us sometimes. It's just a really big family thing for us. And, you know, if your 16-year-old will still talk to you. Sure. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, so, absolutely. But, yeah, he wants to get into dirt racing, um, cars. I don't know. Don't ask me what the classes are because I don't know. He and his dad are figuring that out. But we've got a shop at the house. We, you know, we go wherever. Yeah, I always wanted to do that. But I, I did it for about three months and then <laughs> things happened and it didn't work out very well. Well, he, yeah, he's, I mean, adult, he races against adults now. Yeah. Um, he just moved, he moved into that class about two years ago. And so, yeah, we're enjoying it. Yeah, I don't know the names of the different styles. The only, the only ones I, I know are the carts and the late models. Everything, yeah. everything else in yeah, between, I'm not. But know, he races at Beaver Creek is our home track, okay. which is in Meridianville. It's a dirt, we, we race on dirt. Okay. So he races at Beaver Creek and then, um, and then we go, like I said, Anywhere in between Ohio and Daytona. So. Well, a lot of people don't realize is dirt is almost as much traction as asphalt. Oh, yeah. Sometimes more yeah. traction. So when you're going around those dirt tracks, you think you know you're just you know you're, you're sliding oh, no, he's around not everything. Drifting that much stuff, at all. it is hooking. Yeah. I mean, those, those things are the the suspension setups mm -hmm. and the camber and everything. I mean, yeah. you you almost have to have a neck harness on <laughs> to keep your neck from. Yeah, you know, falling off and he's on a flat cart, so yeah. you know, no, mm. no seat belts, no. He's got a helmet, neck brace, you know that stuff, but he's not locked into anything. Mm. Fit flips, we want him to go out. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so it's we prep tires. You have to do all that. It's a big treatment thing for your tires. Mm. And we do all the things, what <laughs> gear it's on, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Anything else that you get you do on your off time? I mean, I'm sure that's pretty. Uh, that's a takes lot. Up, it takes up your time yeah. quite a bit. So when's the season start and when's it end? I don't I, think I, it does. Oh, really? So you, you guys <laughs> we, race in the winter? Yeah, we oh, race okay. inside. I mean, we'll take some off for the holidays, but like Thanksgiving, we go to Batesville, Mississippi and race indoors. Okay. Um, so we'll, that's where I spend Thanksgiving. And um, between Christmas and New Year's, we go to Daytona Beach usually. And so it's, you know, that's outside, of course. Yeah. We You wouldn't know, you know, you're like on the beach but we don't know there's a beach there right yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah any uh fun. any other plans before we get off here any other plans that that you want to talk about or that i didn't bring up as far as down there at ditto um that's i mean you've covered a lot of it yeah. but 
I, you know, you got to do a shout out to your team. Um, we, we've got a very small staff oh. and we've got a lot of acres. I mean, it's, we're 600 acres and we've got four full time people. Yeah. They're amazing. So yeah, they so do what a people great job. What people don't realize is <clears throat> not only is it that many acres, but it's also you have, especially in, in the spring, summertime, mm -hmm. you know, you have the boats that are stored. So you have to have somebody there all the time getting boats in and out. And, and it's constant when you go down there. It's, mm -hmm. There's very little downtime for that guy. Right. And then you got Nick who is, you know, does everything. Right, right. <laughs> he keeps track of everything for us. And then... So I guess the winter time when I, you know, when the big floods come, I guess what's that, November time frame, October, November. It can be November through March. Knock on wood, and I hate yeah. this. I can't believe that you actually said that well, word. It's over. But well, I'm telling um, you, it's over. It can't happen this late. It just doesn't. Did you say that too? I did. It's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm calling it. We haven't. Um, we haven't had any of those type events in like two years. Yeah, and it was like what three years in a row there for. Well, I told them they they blame me for it. Actually, from the time I started, it was every year. Yeah, you yeah. know, and um, it wasn't little ones. Like right. we had one in 2019 that we were flooded for six weeks, mm. shut down, flooded. Yeah. So, um, and maybe that's a product of TVA kind of seeing what we're doing too, and and kind of helping us out a little bit. Oh, okay. Because TVA controls sure. all the all the water flow, and of course droughts probably yeah. <laughs> that probably helps too. But, mm -hmm. um. You know, they do an amazing job, really. When you think about what TVA is kind of coordinating and, and keeping track of mm -hmm. and how old those dams and locks are and, mm -hmm. and what they do. But, you know, for them to be able to manage that and keep that water under control and still create the electricity and do all the things that, that they also do yeah. is, is pretty impressive. Yeah. But where we are, and you know this because you've been on the on the river, but... Where we are, we're at a pinch point. Mm -hmm. So anytime they're letting a lot of water out of Gunnersville. It's a shed zone, right. basically. Yeah. We had, I mean, it catches right there, and then we pick it up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, what, are, what can you do about it? Well, heck, we can't do anything well, about it, but hold on. Make it stop raining. <laughs> right. And the rain, that's the other thing, you know, and you know this too. It's not the rain in Huntsville that even matters. It's the rain that's in Knoxville and Chattanooga and all that stuff that's upriver yep. that, that we can't you know, that's coming towards us. Sure. So, um, you know, just the little known facts. You know. Yeah, so with the flood like that, the reason I brought that up is we're talking about personnel. The cleanup that has mm -hmm. to happen oh, after yeah. that is sometimes multiple weeks oh, yeah. that before that stuff. I mean, because, you know, the driftwood, you know, <clears throat> and being in that little basin where it's at, everything, of course, when there's a lot of rain and the water's high, that's picking up off, off all the, the trees and all the debris and everything else that's off the river and that little basin as the current's coming down, it's kind of almost going straight in there. So all that trash and stuff gets inside Ditto and as the water, you know, starts to subside a little bit, all that stuff that's on the outskirts stays right. <laughs> in the parking lots and the fields and and everywhere. So that's a quite a big job to get all that stuff um, cleaned up yep. and getting back to normal. Yep. So, and with the minimum amount of staff, like you said, that you have, I mean, they do a, a great job. Yep. Well, I'm past that along, but we, you know, and then we do, you know, we do community cleanups mm -hmm. and all that too. And then we, beyond that, beyond just the boats and the, and the camping and all the things, the greenways and those things, then we're having events yep. that we've got coming up. And so can I talk about them? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, we have uh, Independence Day celebration okay. last Saturday in June, not the 4th of July. All right. Well, can I stop right there for a yep. second? Yep. <clears throat> so the, the first one that you had mm -hmm. was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, wasn't nothing spectacular, but, but it was, I'm not gonna hear me out. It, it, it wasn't as big as like, you know, some of the other stuff around here. Yeah. Right. Okay. Not that it wasn't good, but it, it wasn't as big. Fair enough. But the last couple ones I've gone to, I've been like, how in the world mm -hmm. did it grow this much? I mean, where are they getting the money for all? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it was... It, it was probably the best around in this area, I believe. Oh, thank now. you. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, so it has really grown and has become a great event. Thank you. Yes. Well, I mean, it's and remember that was free. Yeah, exactly. So yep. we pay, um, we charge five dollars to park, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yep. So that's our sponsors. They're helping us with that. But you're talking a fireworks show, live music. We have some food trucks. We sell some beer. We sell some wine, and a, no admission charge. Yep. So um, 
So yeah, so last Saturday in June. Last Saturday in June. And we do that because that's the next question I get. Go ahead and ask it. Why do you do that, Randy? I, I know, but go ahead. Because I've <laughs> asked you before. <laughs> <laughs> because on the 4th of July, folks like you mm-hmm. want to be out on the water and we don't want to create a, a hazard or any kind of safety issues. Plus, y'all are all out on your boats and we don't want to take up where you're parking and where you're enjoying stuff. No. And our customers are enjoying their boats. So if we can catch it before, you know, before everybody gets really into their 4th of July holiday, um, then we can have fun. The people that don't have a boat with us can have fun and um, everybody can enjoy themselves safely. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, go ahead and talk about your next event. Thank you. Yeah. Don't forget that we have our, we have a barbecue competition. It's a team-based competition, so it's not really a public competition, but it's, um, it's in June and um, it's called Reeling and Smoking. Have you done that before? No, but I'll win well, if I go down there. Well, seriously, you should don't totally do I'm, that. I'm telling you, I'll win. We're KCBS they certified probably, or sanctioned. What do you mean it's not open? It's not public. So you can anybody can have their team in it. Mm-hmm. That's fine, but it's you can't. The public can't come down and just kind of try barbecue. They're not selling it. it. You can't just come down. And, oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. So, and that's confusing for a lot of people. So, I'm careful about how I advertise that. Mm. But anyway, team competition. So we've had 25 to 30 teams um, participate in that. So we've got reeling and smoking. We've got Independence Day celebration. We've got um, rods and wheels, which mm. is in November. That's our car cruise in. Um, we've had as many as 123 boats. I mean, boats. Cars. Oh, cars. We'll you. have cars in that one. Yep. So we have 123 cars is the most we've had in that. So um, people love to come down. We have live music. We have a good time. Again, no admission charge for that. We charge a little entry fee, and that's about it. Because um, we're trying to do stuff that are free so people can just come down and enjoy themselves. Mm. And then the whole month of December, we have Christmas on the River. Have you been to that? I've driven by it. Driven by it. Yeah. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I've oh been out. I've been goodness. out of the game for a couple of years. I, well, you I, should come down for I, that. I'll get back into. Well, so that was my first thing that I did when I was in Ditto before you got there. They used to have uh, uh, a light competition for the boats. Yes, and <clears throat> that was run by uh, NABA, North Alabama Boaters Association. Correct. So the first year I go down there, I think I got down there in like a September October time frame. Right. You know, didn't didn't really know anybody at the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's when what's that guy? Who's Dan Boone. The, well, not Dan. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm talking. There was they had um, three judges, and one of them was um, Dale. Strong. He, no, it's on ninety two point five. He's a DJ. Dale. Oh, he's on the radio in the mornings here on ninety two oh, okay. five. Dale something. I don't know. You have to. Anyway, I'd listen to him. You know, going to work all all the time, and I just you know. I knew the voice, never never saw him or anything. So, of course, we went all out. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we had uh, lights everywhere. I mean, we really went all out. And um, so they had these judges coming by. And we thought, you know, to help us out, we put our we put a little table out in front of our— You, uh, you encouraged— uh, so we had little shots for all the judges. <laughs> so, so the judges actually stayed at our boat for a good 15 minutes, and all the other guys were like— Waiting because you know they have to sit their boats while the judges come by, so that I can tell that they were they were watching what was going on there. Why why is I over there so long? Well, you know, we're talking. Obviously, we're talking. <laughs> so, so anyway, nobody knew. Like I said, nobody knew who we were, and so we go up to the event up at the uh, pavilion up there, the Kingston Pavilion, and uh-huh. um, they start naming off all the all the people for you know whatever for the boat sizes, and then they get to ours and you know dance like first place. Bill, Neil, and everybody's like looking around. Well, of course, you, yeah, you know, you got like five <laughs> people just screaming at the top of their lungs, you know, and there, you know, it was it was kind of like a quaint thing, but you know, here we right. come up, we're screaming and yelling, like, give me, give me my money. <laughs> so that was a good introduction introduction for me to the rest of the people there. At Ditto, you know, being loud and noxious guys there. So, but what they had back then is they had a free, like a month. One slip is for for the winners, I think. I mean, you guys still, I know you have the whole winter, but do you have light competitions and stuff down there still? Yeah, okay. yeah we do that. Um, we do that, uh, deck the docks, and we do that for one weekend. Gotcha. Um, we need to get more boats involved in that, so yeah. I need your help encouraging well, that. I, but how you get them involved is you offer money. We did. How much is you It's $250 to three different boats, that three winners, so. Well, that's I mean, not bad. No. 
It's just hard. I know it's it's hard. It's a lot of it's a lot of work, and it's a hard time of the year, and everybody's got things going. Yeah. And I get it, but we've just got to get more people involved in that because people we we don't have them down at the dogs at y'all's at the you know the private dogs. Right. We we ask you to bring your boat over to the fuel dock side. Gotcha. And that way, people can come down and walk along it, mm. and they're not on on the other docks. Okay. And and it's I, I felt like it would be easier for people to see it and enjoy it. So we what, just bring them over. What Wheeler did, which might not have the opportunity here just because of the levels during the winter, mm-hmm. um, but we, what Wheeler does is they have a, like a show. The parade. The parade of, parade yeah. of boats. Yeah. You know, when I was up there, we did that up there also. That's why we, we was prepared because we was at Wheeler first. Right. Then went to Decatur for a very short amount of time because, you know, that's what it was. And then so we left there pretty quickly and then came to Ditto. So that's why we... We, you already we, had all this stuff. We had everything. We were, we were ready. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it's I think it's contagious. You know what I mean? If, right. If you get these guys, you know, if you get these guys... Got to de- get them fired up. Decorating early and they start looking around and they're like, well, you know, I can beat him, you know? Right. And so, yeah. It just takes three or four of those guys down yeah. here, to, I think, to get, get going. Right. So, we got that. That's part of Christmas on the River. Yep. And we have all the Christmas cards that are um, sponsored. Mm-hmm. So those are life-size Christmas cards. We had over 100 of those last year. They're along the Greenway. Gotcha. So we got that. We do two fireworks shows. We do um, live music. How am I missing it? I didn't know. I that. don't know how you're missing it. It's the whole month of December. The reason I moved here, mm-hmm. this that was the main reason, honestly, was why we moved here to be closer. Because, you know, before I lived, uh, you know, man, we were good. 45 minutes away, uh-huh. 40 minutes away. And one of the reasons was to come here. I'm like, that's like 12 minutes away. Right. You know, and then I haven't had a boat since I've been here. <laughs> so, <laughs> you sold your boat. <laughs> well, I've had, you know, not, I've had a that, that tri-tune and um, I had another little smaller one, you know, just because I needed to get out and on the water. But um, yeah, we thought, like I said, we thought this year was it. But anyway, we're talking about the other events. Oh, yeah. So we have... um. And then we have a market day, and we have our we have a train set up, like the little model trains. It's twelve feet by twenty feet, and it's all the Snow Village stuff. It's if you just have to see it. Where's it at? It's down at the clubhouse at East Harbor. Okay. So it fills up that whole space. Oh wow! So I need volunteers to help with that, but I mean it's huge. So I mean, just so many things. Yes, I didn't even know you had. I didn't even know you had anything going on down there. I just thought it was closed up. So no, no, we do that. Now we set that up each. Each, you know, Christmas season. Okay. Then we take it down. So, but I need volunteers for all that. But, um, yeah, so lots of things the whole month of December. Yeah. So, and again, guess what? All of that is free to mm. the public. People can come down anytime. We have, like, the lights strung up along the Greenway, yep. and we're playing music along the Greenway. And I do remember yeah. seeing that because I drive by there. Yeah, you can see it from, you know, when you drive over yep. the bridge. Yep. So, which you'll be able to see the event center, too. That'll be, that'll be heck of a yes. view. Yeah. So. so I got to get down there before that happens. Yep. You know. Yeah, you do. Because I, uh, I think the availability down there once that gets down there is going to go quick. Yep, it is. So that's Absolutely. why I'm on the list. Yes. Well, you're you're there. Yeah. You just need a boat, or when we call you, you can just nope. rent a space. <laughs> I and I, and that's what I plan on doing. Yeah. But I haven't had nobody call me yet. So. Oh, yeah. Well, we did call you once. You, th- you did not. No, we did. Lies. Nope. When? I don't know. Exactly. A few months ago. Never happened. You did not call me a couple months ago. Uh, no, a few months ago. No, I called. We'll no, get it worked uh, out. <laughs> we, we had talked about. We don't need to argue on the TV. We're not arguing. <laughs> we're just having a conversation. We, we had, had a conversation about another person mm-hmm. that was, you know, possibly bringing a boat down there. Okay. And then you were like, when are you coming down here? I'm like, well, you know, since I get a boat. Okay, I'll make I sure didn't you're know on the that, list. I didn't know that was an offer. If I knew that was an offer, then I probably would have took it. We'll make sure you're on the list. I know I'm on oh, the list. Yeah. For a 50 foot, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. I got you. See, so you've got it recorded now. Exactly. So you, can't, you can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't lie. I know. What I'm are you talking about? about? I'm just kidding. Well, anything okay. what else you want to talk about before we well, jump off here? I appreciate you letting me I know, be here. So we would go a little bit longer, but unfortunately, you know, you have a job that you got to get to and. I'm on my lunch break right now. Oh, wow. So I, Thanks you know, for spending lunch with me. I have to get back to what I'm doing, too. Yeah. But um, like I said, anything else you want to talk about? No, I'm good. Okay. I appreciate you having us. Yeah. Having uh, me on there and 
like I said, I, I really appreciate you coming. I know it's taking part of your day, and I know it's something. You know, you're you're on camera quite a bit. You know, you can go on go on the internet and look up your name, and oh, there's all kinds of different things from Von Braun <laughs> to Ditto, and all the different things that you talked about. On the you news. did all so, the research. Yeah, well, I got yelled at. <laughs> I got yelled at, said I didn't do enough research. Uh -huh. So I started, it was I, I didn't want to, I wanted to have a conversation, learn about people. And, but then, you know, going, I'm new to this, you know, so I, I do what I think uh, needs to be done. But then <clears throat> when you start watching your own stuff and then, you know, you have your people that are close to you kind of giving you hints too of oh, yeah. things that you could do better. So this season, I'm really starting to focus in on asking better questions and be able to, you know, if you don't know something about any, you know anything about somebody, you don't know where to. Right. I don't want to say dig, but you don't know which to directions direct. to go. Mm -hmm. So, but it has helped. I mean, I think you're like our third or fourth one. We haven't posted any of them yet, but um, I think I'm doing. I think I'm doing better. You did great. I'm sure I'll know. I was impressed. I'm sure I'll know here soon. Yep. How good I do. <laughs> Get some feedback. Yep. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you don't wear the shirt, you got to bring it back. I'll wear the shirt. Okay. See what size you got. That's. Standard size, got it. I got other ones we'll th that are out. that are bigger. <laughs> that won't help any. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> that's, why, that's why you got that one. <laughs> so anyway, thanks again for coming. Thanks, and, uh, appreciate it. I'm sure we'll see you soon. Yep. All right, thanks. Bye.